Hey everybody. Welcome. Happy Friday. I forgot. I do this every time. I forget to pull my phone up so that I can see comments in the group. Um, I'm excited to be here. We have a lot to talk about today. And guess what? Um, I have a special guest also with me. So um, if you're here with me, I would love it if you would say hey in the comments. Let me know. Just give me a thumbs up or a heart or something if you can see me and hear me. That's going to help me know. Um, that's going to help me know that we're connected there. Hey, Sherry. I see Sherry saying hey. Good. Sherry, are you in the um, in our group or are you watching on the main page? Uh, hey there. All right, everybody. Lots to tell you about. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. L welcome to lunch and learn and learn about painting. We're going to talk about creative stuff and I have a lot to update you on. Okay, so Deborah, hey Deborah, I'm glad you're here. Sherry's watching in the floral workshop. Awesome, awesome. All right, so as y'all come on, let me know you're here. Let me know in the comments and let me know where you're watching from. Let me know where, where you're watching me from. I'd love to know. Okay, because I should be coming into the Floral Cross Workshop group um, that's in full swing, and I'm going to tell everybody about that. I've also got it going to our YouTube channel, so lots of places for us to gather together thanks to the um, wonderful gift of technology. So, um I've got some special guests that I'm going to be bringing on in just a few minutes, but let me give you a little recap first of what we've been up to this week. It's been a very busy week and we're not finished. So we have the Floral Cross Workshop in full swing. I'm seeing more names come up. Awesome. I see Julia's coming in too. So that is, this is our second annual. We did the first one last year and I just, it's such a special project. I wanted to offer it again. And so I was going to go in and just recreate all those lessons. And the more I looked at it, I just felt like the Lord was just saying, leave it alone. So I've not changed the lessons. It's the lessons from last year, um, about it's, it's, uh, let me show you. It's going to be telling you all the things about it. So this is the project. So what we're doing is we are using a surface, whether it's a canvas or paper, and we're using papers to create a background, a background that has the potential to tell a story. And it could tell a very personal story that only you know the story or it could be a story to help you share your faith or to share something that's special to you. There's so much potential in this workshop. And so it's a really special one to me. Then we're also, not we're not leaving the background just a background. Then we're creating this cross shape. It goes through a lot of stages, and sometimes we talked about this last night. The stages aren't very pretty. They're kind of awkward, kind of like puberty. Like, it's like, what is that? But, like, this is one of the stages, and it's a lot. One of the reasons I love mixed media is it's so much like life. We go through so many seasons and stages in our life, don't we? And sometimes we get stuck in a stage that doesn't look very pretty. It's an awkward stage or a gawky stage or it's a painful stage, but that stage is not going to last. God's doing a work and it's it will change. It will get better. Um, even in the seasons and stages where everything's beautiful and wonderful, that's not going to stay that way. There's going to be hard seasons that come but they don't stay. So there's like this ebb and flow to our life. 
And artwork is such a good example of that. And so whenever we're working on mixed media and we're creating these layers that will tell a story, um, we can just use that as a time to process our current stage of life. We can use it as a, a time to, as we're laying down these pages, use it as a time for prayer, a time to give thanks, a time to honor God. It could also be a time of therapy. Um, one of the ladies in our group described it that way. It's very therapeutic and it is. So it, an example of this, this just looks like a board, doesn't it, with pages on there, but it's more than that. It's symbolic. There's a lot of symbolism in here. So I love old books. I've always loved old stuff. Even as a little girl, I can remember us when we would go stay at um, our grandparents' farm, there was an old dilapidated cabin and we would just go in there and prowl around in there and find all kinds kinds of treasures and I loved it. I still have some of the little bottles that I found. Oh, I'm afraid to know, guess how many years ago it that was because I'm 60 now. So back when I was probably 10, 12 years old, I loved old things. So I'm still loving old things, but now I've learned how to use them in a way that's creative to help tell a story. And that's what I'm teaching in this workshop. So because I love old stuff, I like to rescue old books, uh, books that people throw away or I'll find them at estate sales. So this project, I have rescued a couple of old law school books. And so I've incorporated those law school book pages into this background. There's also um, some old arithmetic I'll tell you, I'm going to be honest with you. I struggled with math in school growing up. It would bring tears to me. So I love being able to incorporate old arithmetic book pages into my background. And I'll tell you why in a second. So then there's also, um, I've got some hymn book pages in there. This is an old devotion page that's got a verse from Psalm, Psalm 1, 1 through 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So all of this is telling a story. Then, if you look close, I've got some designs on top of that. That's the transfer, the design transfer that I transferred onto that. I'm going to paint a cross on top of these legal pages, on top of that old arithmetic page because y'all the cross fulfilled the law so it seems fitting for me to paint a cross on top of that legal page as a, a symbolism that God has fulfilled the law through Christ Jesus on the cross so that's just a simple example of how we can use our artwork our creativity as for many things, but one is to tell a story. We can also use it to share our faith. So I could tell other people about this story or I could keep it to myself, but I just shared it with y'all. It's a form of sharing my faith. It tells you about me for me to share this with you and we can do it to whatever extent we want to do it. I've got some art pieces back here that, um, and I've already shown these to the ladies in the workshop, but this is one of the projects in our um, uh, Creative Heart Studio that our members have access to. This is another one very symbol, similar to this of old book pages behind here. And this one, I did this one as uh, in memory of my daddy. He was a public accountant. And so let me see if I can show this. And some of y'all, this is a repeat if you were with me on Zoom last night. Look at that handwriting there. That reminded me of my daddy's handwriting. I grew up working in his office in the summers and that just it had a soft spot in my heart. And then up here in this upper corner, this was an old accounting book. And it's a, it's a textbook, so it's got a business's name up there. 
look at that. See that business's name? So if this was an actual page, it would have my daddy's business name on there. So I just wrote above it, J-O-D, that was his initials. And then look at the date right here. So this one has a date. Well, let me go the right direction. See that date right there, November? It, it was November 30th, 1930, and it had a line you could write it in. Well, his birth date, and I didn't catch this till I'd already put it down. His birth date was the 29th. So I added the 29 there, and then I filled in, so it was 1937. And it's just, nobody else knows about this unless I tell it to them. But as I'm working on this piece of art, I can be reflecting on my childhood, my life, and how my Father God has had his hand on me my entire life. The hard seasons, the good seasons, the difficult stages, those awkward stages, those ugly stages, the beautiful stages, my Father God had, has, has had his hand on me my entire life. That's what I was processing, working through this piece. So there's so many pieces of art that I have that I can look at those pieces of art. And I remember creating them because I was using them. Even though I would sell those designs, they were a part of my heart. God used them to bring healing to help me process things. So because of that and, and the impact it's had on my life, it has burned it on my heart to help other women learn to do the same thing. And that's what we do. Um, a, this is like, have you ever been to Sam's and or Costco and they give you those samplers as you go through the grocery store, they give you those samplers to let you taste the food before you buy it. That's kind of what this workshop is. It's teaching these ladies how to paint this cross and how to use their art in that way to tell a story. It's also giving them a taste of how I teach and what goes on inside our Creative Heart Studio. So it, it serves several purposes, but that's two of them right there. And so I want to talk to y'all just a little bit about that, about the Creative Heart Studio, about what we've been doing in the workshop. Some of you watching are in the workshop right now, and your painting might be at this stage, or your painting might be at this stage. You haven't started yet, and that's absolutely okay. Watch and learn, but take a step and start. Just take a step. It takes taking a step before you can get to the next step. So whether you're at this stage or you're at this stage where you've got your design down and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do with it, or you're at this really awkward stage of what is that? <laughs> Wherever you're at with it, I just want to encourage you to keep with the process and remember it's like life it's a process that we work through and um it's it can bring you so much joy in just giving your showing yourself grace showing yourself mercy hey jonica i see all these other names coming in i'm over here just to chat and uh thank y'all for being here and thank you for letting me know you're here and I see my surprises coming in too. So I'm excited to introduce you to my surprises in just a minute. So no matter where you are, for those of you watching me from the workshop or whether you're watching me and you're not in the workshop, this can apply to life as well. No matter where you are in your stage or maybe you're in the completed, you know, and you're shining bright and you've got your artwork finished no matter where you are, and it makes me want to cry. God has his hand on you. He has his hand on you. And if you will allow him, he will do a work in your heart, processing your story through art. So I have one more lesson with these 
beautiful workshop ladies who it, I've just had so much joy watching them use their creativity. And some of them are brand new to art. And that's great. I love having that. I love all the different stages because some of the, some my surprise that I'm about to show you in just a minute, um, they've been with me for a little while. And so they've been doing what I was just talking about. And that brings me joy too, to see us at all of these different stages of our creativity, whether you're like my friend, Jonica, and you create this beautiful dessert and Jonica just so you know I've been using bacon a cake as an example with our painting layers and um let me show y'all this because some of this painting is so much like frosting a cake so we've been talking about brush strokes we've been spending a lot of time on brush strokes and how it can just look so weird our strokes can look so weird but then we start adding these very light layers. Like when you're frosting a cake, we're adding these light layers. And then all of a sudden it starts coming alive. It starts like, oh, I can see something with that. And then if you press too hard, it's just like the cake. I'm going to tell you, if you press too hard with that spatula, when you're putting that frosting on, you're going to have cake crumbs all in your frosting. And it's just going to be a mess. So we just use a really light touch. And one of the nights, um, Catherine volunteered and she, she volunteered to paint on her hand so she could feel the pressure that she needed to use with her paintbrush. Because the way I teach the painting is we're using our brushes as a tool. We want the brush to do the work. And that's what I'm teaching. And that's why it takes a while. We spend a lot of time on this because we want the brush to do the work. So we have to learn about the brush. We have to get familiar with the brush. We have to get to know the brush. And before long, then you are like me and you start saying, this is my friend Filbert. Now, some of them at some stages are like, he is not my friend yet. <laughs> but that's what we're teaching. So before I introduce my surprise to you, I want to tell you something. Um, we have something very special that I'm working on and it's a little mini course and it's brushes and strokes. And I'm trying to take notes. I'm working on this behind the scenes of putting this together so that we can take a deep dive into using our brush as a tool, allowing it to do the work. So I'm working on that course and it will be a gift to my current Creative Heart Studio members and anyone who joins us through midnight Tuesday night. So I want to go ahead and tell you that, that I want, if this sounds like it's right up your alley, if this sounds interesting to you, I've got a link or you can just type the words Creative Hearts in the comments and it should send you the link but I've got a link for you to read about more about the Creative Heart Studio because um, I it's just burned on my heart to encourage y'all to, even if you don't join me, I want to encourage you to look for ways to explore your creativity and how you can use it as a tool to help you to help others and bring glory to the Lord, okay? So before I start bringing them on, I'm just gonna say it one more time. Workshop ladies, we're, we've got this day to finish up, so you're okay. We have our Zoom tonight at six o'clock, and then I'm gonna be available this weekend to help you, and we'll continue to work through this. Okay, so, and then the last thing I wanna say one more time is, I want to invite you to join us in Creative Heart Studio. I would love to have the honor to teach you and guide you in how to use your creativity in a way that will help you and help others. And you can use it to bring glory to the Lord. Now, I've asked a few of um, these ladies who've been learning with me for a while to join me. And I'm going to start adding them because um, I want us to have a conversation. Here they come. 
look there. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for allowing this to work, for one. So let me introduce y'all to my friends, okay? And some of you already know them. I always love it when things work. So Amanda is here with uh -huh. me, and she's in her own season. So Amanda has small children. Amanda works. Amanda gardens. Amanda has a husband. She she has a new puppy who's like a third child. Amanda is is one of our creative hearts. Now let me introduce each one of y'all and then I want to we want to have a conversation. All right, in the bottom corner is I might have a bird in here. Barbara, Barbara Mosley, and we have a special connection. Barbara uh, so some of y'all may not know this, but I've been painting and selling my artwork for almost 30 years. Barbara's, we connected through a craft show and she started purchasing my artwork. And it's so sweet how the Lord has brought us full circle. And she was buying my artwork. Now she's creating artwork with me. We're doing it together. So I was tickled that she, she rearranged her schedule so we could be on here and talk. Um, Susan is driving and we're not going to get her distracted. She's been at work and she worked it out that she could join in with us as well. Um, I'm in a parking lot. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'll be stopping just a second. <laughs> okay. So what I'll do, Susan, is I'm going to start with Amanda and, um, we can because of the the miracle of technology we can all just have a normal conversation it's not like yeah. we're going to cut each other off so i didn't get to tell uh barbara and i were able to talk a little bit beforehand i was not able to do that with amanda or susan so they're very brave and they trust me they have no <laughs> idea <laughs> i'll have a few minutes and then i have to go pick up the grandparents to take them to school for grandparents day so Good I'll talk you. quickly. <laughs> Good for you. So see, she's in, so we're all in different seasons. So Amanda, I want you to be um, give people an idea of how using your creativity helps you. I definitely a form of therapy, and it keeps me busy because when you have idle hands, you know thoughts start forming and. Uh, you get distracted too easily. So if I can keep me busy, it keeps me happy. Yeah. So even if it's just doing like these guys and not really having a purpose for it, it keeps me content and on track. Good. And one thing I love about you is that you include your girls in creating with you. I just, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. And you're planting power, powerful seeds in their life. They so, love to paint. So <laughs> it's hard yeah. to keep them out of the paint. <laughs> and Debbie's saying everyone needs me time also. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So have you seen other benefits from using your creativity? Oh, well, the lettering part, that has really been beneficial. It keeps it on your brain you know you're soaking in it and it helps i try to do cards for church so it brings things to mind rather quickly now i'm like oh yeah i could use this or even in my own bible studies that i do on the side there's things that you have talked about and then all of a sudden i'm like reading it again in my bible study and i'm like wow okay uh, the spirit's really moving there so I love that. And I, so that's an example of how she uses it for others to help others with the cards. And I totally forgot about this, that with the Creative Heart Studio, like this week we're painting, but you get access to the lettering and scripture journaling. So that's what she's, I also teach them lettering and scripture journaling because we want to write it on our heart. Yeah, I love it. I love that it's combined and I can switch back easily in that hub and I can live in the hub. <laughs> Thank you. So what, so we have a hub. It's like a school. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a school. And you know how some schools have different wings to the school. So there's mm -hmm. a wing for our 
uh, lettering and scripture journaling, and then there's classrooms within that wing. There's another wing for painting, and um, we do all kinds of painting projects in there. And then we have a workshop wing where we're doing these short pro uh, short classes. And uh, as members, you can switch around in there and easily access your lessons whenever you want to work on them. That's fun. So is there yeah. anything else you would want to say to encourage the ladies that are watching in using their creativity or any in anything that you want to say? Uh, I would say just make a mark. Just start going. It doesn't matter if it looks like Pam. <laughs> it doesn't look it doesn't matter if it looks like Susan's or or Bobby's or mine or whoever. It doesn't matter. Just make a mark. So. I love that. Yep. I love that. Thank you for being willing to share. Oh, yeah. And th she's very helpful in our group. So mm -hmm. I, I always feel relieved whenever I see her because she's good at figuring out tech stuff. And things like I try. <laughs> when somebody can't log in on their <laughs> Zoom and I'm like, oh, I hope Amanda didn't hear it. <laughs> well, thank you for fun. taking time because I know you're busy. So mm -hmm. that means a lot to me that we were able to work it out. I wanted them to see your beautiful face. Oh, thank you. Post yeah. in the comments anytime you want to, but I just I feel like we can connect more when you can see a face. Yeah, they are beautiful, aren't they? Yes, they are beautiful, gorgeous. <laughs> well, I'm gonna run along, and yeah. y'all have a great day. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Uh huh. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, so Susan, since you're parked. You want to tell them a little bit about yourself and how did we meet and how did you okay. use your creativity? So I have, um, through the years, I mean, it's been a long time, um, started with making basket, you know, uh, material on basket before kids and during kids. I did cards. I've always done stamping up and, mm -hmm. and I've done, um, photo, you know, photo books. And through the years, I always get something that I love and then earrings and flower arrangements. And, and, um, and then as the kids got older, you know, well, of course, they had to do their own Valentine's. I made them do their <laughs> Valentine's and, and um, got them involved. And Megan, my daughter loved projects because she could do her artwork in the projects. And well, it's just a part of life. It's always been, I mean, I just, you know, didn't even really think about it till now, how much a part of life. And then I started a caring craft group and um, we have a group of ladies. Every season's a different group. And um, we give the things that we make to people in the hospital. And so that goes with my social, cause I'm a very social person. So that goes with my social part. And so we make things and give them away. And, mm -hmm. and um, we actually did a paint class. My first time teaching them a simple, project and that was super super fun but um just being in in this group has been a god's perfect timing i met um uh, pam at a craft show at yellow daisy festival in atlanta and um, stone mountain and it was right before covid and i kept watching from the heart from the heart when am i going to see her and i didn't see her for so long and then I got to see her right before she started this class and it was just a miracle. It was a God miracle. It's definitely, and my kids are grown now. My youngest one's 22. He's a senior in college. And, um, so my season's different. I'm still working, but I have a lot more time and loving painting, you know, just, just love painting. And I've always done cards, but I write fast, you know, I'm always in a hurry and I don't take time to meditate. So, I'm trying to learn that. That's like a learning learning curve for me, learning how to um, meditate and stuff on on what I write. So that's been really fun too. It's it's been fun to watch you because for those watching, Susan, and everybody has their own style, and that's what I want. I want it to be your artwork. I don't want it to be my artwork. I want it to be your artwork for me to be able to guide you in how to use your brush and how to use the paints and and the techniques of it so that you can make it your own and susan loves to tell a story with her artwork she does things that are very symbolic 
and I admire you for that. And she's also likes to experiment. She's one of the ones from our group that will mix her colors and experiment with her different colors. And I like to encourage them to keep a book to experiment and document your experiments like your color charts and color studies and stuff like that and Susan does that and she shows it sometimes and has notes beside it and that's one of the best ways that we can learn and as we're getting older we need those notes you think you're going to remember <laughs> but you don't remember so those notes are so helpful so I love seeing um I love seeing you do that and and you're an encourager you're really good about encouraging other people in the group so um, I appreciate that about you. Well, appreciate you too, Pam. You're an awesome teacher. <laughs> so is there I, I, one more? I yeah. wanted to share um, when I was going through my season with my mom dying and being able to last year, you know, do the cross and, and have, um, have Mod Podge with things that were hers to be able to put on and, um, it's, it is healing, you know, I mean, God is the author of creativity and so many times people do create, you know, like one of the things that got me into artwork is interpreting a, a class at college and, and they were all about just being so independent and doing their own thing, but God puts it in our heart, the creativity in our heart and he, and he helps us, he helps us with our pen or with our piano playing or whatever, you know, our music or whatever kind of art form that we just fall in love with. And he just, he helps us. And it's, it's really fun being, being in connection with him in that way. I love that because he is the author of create. It's a gift. Our creativity mm -hmm. is a gift. Yeah. And I believe it honors him when we yeah. use it. As, and I think it gives him glory whenever, and we talk about this a lot, but how we can just observe flowers and nature. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Barbara is, that's something about Barbara is she's always studying flowers and nature and taking pictures. And I just feel like that is a way to honor him because mm -hmm. that's his creation. And, you know, it's, mm -hmm. I don't, I think it makes him yeah. happy. Yeah, mm -hmm. to do that. So is there anything that anything else you would want to say to the ladies as far as encouraging them with their creativity in whatever um, their season is? I, I don't think anything is wrong. I, I mean, we are learning and we might be beginners, but being, you know, being connected with God and we can ask God help us to, you know, make it look but it doesn't have to be compared to anybody else. It's just us. And even, you know, with my caring craft group, I'm like, there's no judgment here. You guys just have fun and enjoy. And, you know, and then we're going to give the cards to somebody and they're going to be so excited to see something homemade, That's you know, nice. and whatever level, if it's a child's level or, you know, an adult's level or whatever, they're just going to love seeing the homemade thing. That's good. That's good. Uh, so Barbara, do you tell, tell about yours, tell as much as you want to about your season and how you're using your creativity right now in your season of life. Okay. Uh, my husband and I are empty nesters. We've got two of our kids who live locally. So the kids and our grandkids are here and then our sons are both in different towns. So we don't get to see them much, but our kids are, our grandkids are grown now. You know, they're, the youngest wow. is in third grade. I mean, I hate this. Um, so we're not doing as much with them. And my little craft Saturdays don't work so much anymore. They have their own things to do. But I still like getting my hands dirty in some form of creating. Uh, we are made in God's image and God is the master creator. And as we create, we are honoring that image of God that's in us. So I do enjoy going out in nature. I do enjoy taking pictures, even though very few of them ever get used because I 
can't focus, but I'm, I enjoy it. And I appreciate, I like to say that I'm an appreciator and I can look at a flower and be absolutely amazed at how God thought of making this and how creative and what the purpose of the parts are and why it looks different from the flower beside it. Just very much into that and being able to use the art and learning to paint is a great way for me to express that. I, um, I'm also a pastor and I like art as worship. I think there is something about meditating on scripture or a thought that uses a different side of your brain that allows more to flow. I think I, I just get more out of that. And I also like using art for prayer. Again, it's using a different side of my brain so somehow I stay better focused during prayer. That's Don't know how that works, but it works for me. That's so I do like those as tools for my life and my own spiritual faith and using them for the people in my care at the church. Mm -hmm. I like being in this group because it is filled with encouragers mm -hmm. and teachers, whether they're behind the camera or not. They are, these women know what to say and when to say it. And a lot of times it has nothing to do with the art that we're making. It is a great group to just enter and surround yourself with like-minded people to learn from them and grow from them. And I like that in our process, you know, Pam's real good about breaking classes up into this part or that part. And she uses the art to tell a story and I've got a lot of her art <laughs> And I, I <laughs> her stories in my ministry. Sometimes the picture draws me, but the scripture that is with it is exact. The Holy Spirit just exactly puts it together. And that is wonderful to me. And when Pam was showing you her picture and she was putting the things in, in memory and in honor of her dad, we can all do that. We can use backgrounds of things in big ways that remind us of parts of our life, parts of our story. And then we get into the middle where we're actually putting the paint to the canvas. And maybe there's something in that that helps tell a story. But when we get to the finishing it off and adding the little details that's another time we add the interest of our personal story to that. And when we let people see our work, we can point out just like, oh, this reminded me of dad here and this reminded me. We can use buttons from a great grandmother or spools of thread that were in grandmom's sewing kit. Different different ways that we can honor and, and remember parts of our story. And we do get to share that. And the fact that we are using scripture to do the lettering, which is new to me, and I'm enjoying that. That's another way that we can share our story and celebrate and testify to God. People ask, oh, well, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Or even seeing the verse, it's planting a seed. That's true. And you get to, this is my favorite verse because. Yeah. And it just enables us to honor God, to be creative, which is what we were designed to do. And then to share our faith, 
and open ourselves up to others for a deeper relationship. And I know I talked a whole lot and you didn't answer any, you didn't ask any questions. <laughs> well, you, you just, you gave a wonderful summary and a testimony from your own life. And I just appreciate you being willing to share like that because I feel like I believe those things and I see y'all using th that in your life. And it's just a blessing to me that um, we are united in that, you know, we're all, um, I just want to make sure to say that be we're all in different seasons of life, but we all carry heavy loads no matter what season you're in. And I know some people like Amanda have small children at home, Others are empty nesters and you don't have the small children at home. And some of the ladies that we have, they don't even, they're, they're alone. You know, they don't have anybody. And even in that stage, you could still be carrying a big burden. And that's just of the aloneness. You know, that can also be a burden of being alone. Um, even though at one stage you might be craving some alone time, but then at this other stage, it's an overload of alone time. Even in that season of life, carving out time, I mean, because that season when you're alone, you could still fill it with busyness that doesn't really matter, but you can make sure to carve out time to use your creativity whether it's in lettering or in the scripture journaling or painting and just using being intentional, I think is the word because um, we can all be creative. But I think something happens when you're intentional and you want to use that time in a way that helps you or helps somebody else or brings glory to the Lord. He blesses that. And I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't. But he sees our heart. He, he sees your heart. He sees the intentions of your heart. He sees the motives of your heart. He, he sees and understands it better than we even know ourselves. So he sees what you're struggling with. And um, using your creativity, being intentional with it, can be a time that you can... Um, be ministered to maybe that's the word i'm trying to use by the lord and create something beautiful with it whether you're making cards like so many of our ladies make cards and they share it share those cards we have some of the ladies that they're making things all the time and sharing with their family um our other barbara uh when when we do a project she makes several of them and she's going to give them away and I love that. I love that. And using some of these techniques, you could, if you wanted to, you could add more details that would be, if you're giving it to a family member, that background might be something specific for that family. And then a different background piece is added for a different family. There's just so many possibilities with it. So Barbara, do you have anything else that you would want to say because uh, everything you've said has been very encouraging, but is there anything else that you would want to say um, about our group or specifically to the ladies who are watching in a, a word of encouragement? All of the ladies are at different levels of ability. Oh. And it really is inspiring to see those who have whether they've been doing it or not they have a whole lot of talent yes it's it's so inspiring to see them and to see how they're using the same things that we're using and the same lesson but how it looks different and it has a different purpose mm -hmm. and meaning behind it and the ladies are absolutely so very encouraging there, you know, there are ways that they're encouraging like, oh, well, I don't like this. And how can you, how can I fix this? And they have great suggestions or little tweaks here and there. They're seeing it with their creative eyes that God gave them. And that's very 
very helpful. And um, it's fun to see what they're doing with it um, and how they're using, like the other Barbara and how she just makes so many of them as gifts. Mm -hmm. it, it is a varied group of people, different abilities, different stages in life. And Pam is leading us and encouraging us. And it's like Amanda said, just make the mark. Yeah, that was once, the, we need that on a shirt. <laughs> we do. Just make once, a mark. <laughs> once you're intentional about making that mark, there's something about that first mark that then okay. helps you let go and keep going. Does let me ask this. Um for those who are watching, do you have any questions? I usually open it up for questions. Does because I see several of our ladies watching. We have several Debbies and um, Dolores, good morning to you. And Sherry, I'm just going to brag on Sherry because Sherry's new to our group. And she's one of those is like, well, I've never painted before. And Terry was helping me last night with, um, we're doing a prize giveaway for the people who come to Zoom. And she was like, I don't, mine just looks funny. And he saw it and he said, that looked good. I don't think she can hear it, but you just, I think we have a tendency to look at, we see all the faults, but y'all are doing a great job. Here's Julia. Um, Julia's really helpful also. She started in the group with lettering and learned how much I love to paint. Yes. And Julia's very helpful as well. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here watching too. So this is something new that we just started after the first of the year. It used to be two groups. I had a lettering membership and I had a painting group. And with a lot of changes going on in my life, I needed to streamline and make things simpler for myself and for my team. And I wanted it to be a blessing to the ladies who were in both those memberships. So we combined it. So Barbara and um, Susan here, they were in the painting group. But when we combined everybody into that one school, then that gave Barbara and Susan access to what was happening over in the lettering and scripture journaling group. So now they have access there's two and a half years worth of lessons over there oh, in that wing of our school. Um, scripture verses, uh, design traceables. We do a traceable every week, Bible verses. So it, it's a lot of information. So it's meant to be not overwhelming. So you can either go into the painting hub and just enjoy staying in there and you can take time and go over to the lettering hub and just do some of the lessons over there. Or you can just stick with one or the other. There's no right or wrong way to do it. It's meant to be more like a beautiful buffet. And so picture we're all at this beautiful restaurant that's a buffet. And they ring the bell and say, we're putting out fresh shrimp. Well, if you don't like it, <laughs> Don't go up there and get the shrimp. You know, you just get what you want to eat. Or if you love all the desserts that they put out, then just take your time and enjoy all the desserts, you know. So, but the other thing that happened with that is we actually, it's where we had some members that were paying for being in both groups. Now it's one price and it's only $29 a month to access both of those. Um, I want to look and see if anybody else asked a question. So when Julia was uh, posted her comment that she started out with lettering, she started out in that that um, area, but now she has access to both. Uh, let's see who else. I see Beth is saying that she loves this project. And, uh, Diane. We've got Debbie. Tony. Hey, Tony. So many people watching. So thank you. And Karen, I'm going to talk about you, Karen. Karen is was in our lettering group, and she is one that journals every day. As far as I know, she journals every day. 
and she's got such a gift of giving and a gift of encouraging and she posts her journal pages with her prayers into our creative heart studio group every day and it's such an encouragement to people so um it's just such a wide variety of women in there does anybody have a question before we um and susan do you have anything else you want to add i'm looking um, so I just, i'm really enjoying it i'm really enjoying um taking the time it does you know you do have to intentionally take the time um i know that the classes are on tuesdays uh, the Zoom classes are every other Tuesday, but I put every Tuesday on my calendar so that whether or not I'm um, with Pam or not, I'm taking that time to do my my um, artwork. That's a good idea to yeah. make. Yeah. That's a great idea because that way you're being intentional and you're uh, making an appointment. You're making an appointment with your creativity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, I, I've got the link for any of y'all that are interested in the Creative Parts Studio and being able to access that bonus course. Um, the deadline is Tuesday night, so I want to encourage y'all to go ahead and sign up. The link is at the very top of the comment. I just highlighted it there. But um, even wherever you're at on your journey, we're here to help we're here to help. Did you say that course was for a beginner? It's going to be the big, here's, yes. So it's going to be the basics of mixed media. And I'm wanting to do it so that it's all together because I'm, it's stuff I'm teaching all the time. But instead of having to find it in all these different places, I'm going to get it all together. It'll be more like a boot camp kind of thing. And we'll go into depth with the brushes and, uh, brush strokes want to that seems like an area that most people need a little bit of extra help so um i think it's going to be good i think uh pam i think god has given you a lot of wisdom to continue your courses and and the new course that we have you know on the cross you're able to use the courses from last year i think it's really really smart it's really very wise yeah, thank you. It's from him. I <laughs> just got to listen. I love I'm it. I always want to recreate things, and that's better use of time. Yeah. And it's such a piece when he said, leave it alone. Don't yeah. leave, it, leave it alone. I love so, it. That's what we're doing. <laughs> well, thank y'all. I hope that uh, it tickles me that our technology worked today and that we were able to do this. And, um, we, I'm thankful that y'all were able to work it out with your schedule because I know everybody's busy. So for those watching on the replay, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and let me know you watched the replay. I would love to know that you watched. So let's see, today's Friday. So for those in the workshop, we'll meet tonight at six o'clock in Zoom and I'll be available to help you, and I'll be around on Saturday to help you if you've got questions with your project, and then I'll be back Tuesday, and we'll do some lettering at lunch, and then Tuesday nights, the cutoff, get access to that um, bonus, so I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend, and thank you again, Barbara and Susan and Amanda. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you so Great much. Do it. Thanks. All yeah. right. Well, y'all have a good weekend and I'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye. Party. Bye-bye.